Hey, so uh, I haven't really done any vlogging or anything in a long time, and I don't have any production stuff set up to be able to do it like well in my own apartment, uh, especially considering we're all, you know, locked down right now uh, in California and have been since like mid-March. But I've been putting a lot of time into uh, playing video games. Um, and, you know, as a middle-aged guy, uh, it's something that I probably shouldn't really be putting as much time into as I am. Um, you know, I should be a more responsible individual and, and uh, contribute to society, I guess. But, um, screw it. <laughs> Since everything's kind of broken um, and things have been kind of difficult, like, you know, geez, psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, um, you just, you, you know, it, it's hard to, like, feel productive. It's hard to, you know, feel like you're progressing. So, uh, video games have been a great way to get my mind off of things, honestly, and to kind of have, like, dumb little goals, you know, to, to have something to do. And it's actually been kind of nice in a way because you're able to spend tons of time, I mean, hours at a time playing these games. And that's something that I didn't have the opportunity to do before. And, you know, my wife is pregnant. She's going to be giving birth in November. So uh, the, the window of opportunity is also collapsing on this because I'm probably not going to be able to spend as much time, you know, uh, with video games as I was before. But uh, I wanted to do a video and maybe even a series of videos because I wanted to talk about uh, how good uh, some of these games have been and what my experience has been like, especially uh, with PlayStation. I've been really uh, invested into the PlayStation 4, and there are a lot of, you know, first-party exclusives available through Sony that are just phenomenal. Um, and the ones that I've enjoyed, you know, are kind of the big ones that everybody talks about. Um, for example, I, I, I platinumed my first game ever, which was uh, Spider-Man. Um, and the reason why was just because it was so fun to play that I didn't mind continuing to do every single little thing that they threw at you to do. So I kind of figured out early on, like, oh, I needed to do these 10 things, I needed to do these 10 things, and then slowly but surely I had done everything there was to do. And it was an enjoyable experience pretty much throughout. Um, another one that I really enjoyed was Horizon Zero Dawn. And uh, again, you know, that came out, you know, a few years back. I think it was like 2017 or something. Uh, but the world building and, and the storyline and everything is so unique, very interesting. Uh, fighting those, you know, what are essentially robot dinosaurs or whatever. Uh, the fact that they, you know, are different pieces and you pop them off and, you know, your different weapon sets do different things. You know, uh, it actually made archery and uh, things pretty cool, like in that game. Uh, the story was kind of confusing at points only because um, you weren't always sure exactly what was going on, but uh, but I really enjoyed that uh, game as well. Some of it was a little grindy towards the end, um, but I platinumed that game also. But the main game that I wanted to talk about today real quick is The Last of Us Part Two. Um, my experience with the original The Last of Us came late. I was not one of the people that had played it on the PlayStation 3. I actually played the remastered version on the PlayStation 4, and I played it over the course of, like, a couple of years. So, like, again, I hadn't in life had the opportunity to just sit and do video gaming for hours on end, like, you know, spend an entire day or an entire weekend or something just sitting around in sweatpants and gaming. Um, so imagine like watching like a, a really great television show and you're not able to binge it you can only visit it for like 30 minutes at a time over the course of like a year or something and that had been like my gaming experiences and and that's not really conducive to a very memorable experience because you forget what happened you forget where you are in the game you for, you forget the story so the last of us initially had not had that big of an impact on me but when i played through it this year during lockdown the original last of us uh and finished it um, I was profoundly moved by it. It was the first time, really, that I think I had ever been, like, emotionally affected by a video game. I mean, even just saying that seems kind of crazy or cheesy or weird, but it, it was really well made, really well handled. Uh, the story was, was, you know, simple, but good. Um, they took a lot of, you know, tropes that are 
very common, you know, as you know, and they were able to develop them into something that was truly memorable and unique uh, and mostly, you know, character based. And so I had uh, an affinity for The Last of Us and I was really excited about The Last of Us Part Two. And I actually successfully avoided the spoilers that had come out. Uh, and so I won't necessarily, well, I kind of have to. So I guess spoiler alert. Uh, if you haven't played through the game and you don't know what happens, then you probably shouldn't be watching this video because I'm going to talk about The Last of Us Part Two and how I feel about it. But essentially, you know, one of the lead characters from the first game, Joel, um, in a horrible, horrible sequence, is murdered by another character named Abby using a golf club to his head repeatedly. And it is, you know depicted in all of its computer animated glory. And what makes it harder and weirder is that in this video game, you actually play as Abby. And I was confused when I first started playing the game because I was excited to play as Ellie. You know, Ellie is the, the young woman who had accompanied Joel in the first game, you know, and she is a very resourceful and interesting character. You know, I like how she is, you know, portrayed as a product of the environment that she has been forced into and seeing her develop you know now she's like this 19 year old woman and she can clearly take care of herself uh and doesn't necessarily need joel but she needs joel for the emotional support that joel provides i mean as a father figure and i was excited to play as ellie and you do play as ellie but very early in the game uh they force you to start playing as this complete stranger abby and then lo and behold you know you realize like Abby has it in for Joel and then you even are playing her murdering Joel. Like you lead them to each other in the game. And the fact that the game repeatedly like forces you to make choices or decisions that you as the gamer would probably not be making. And the fact that you have like these horrified, you know, uh, feelings of guilt <laughs> of like doing these horrible, horrible things, not only as Abby, but also as Ellie you start questioning like, well, what is the point of all of this? And it just seems so, you know, dark and, and depressing and dreary and oddly timed as well, because the storyline involving, you know, this pandemic that has turned everybody into zombie people, except for Ellie and Joel, uh, we have a pandemic now where everything is kind of broken down and no shops are open and people are scrounging for things you can't even find toilet paper and uh i don't know what weapons you can build out of toilet paper but uh it, it's it's oddly similar um even the political environment and the fact that everything you know everybody's in factions everybody's protesting everybody's pissed everybody's tired of the status quo and they're fighting over things um everybody's so angry uh it's kind of like that in real life so playing the game is actually it's hard um and i don't mean challenging like the gameplay is challenging although it can be but it's difficult to get through it's a bit of a slog so not only did they develop the game so that you had to play as abby and you go around you know doing these horrible things to the characters that you care about but they make you play as abby for half the game you basically start over again from the beginning and see the last three days in Seattle from her perspective and her friends and what she's doing and what she had going on and what her backstory is and why she killed Joel. It's a lot. And throughout, I was kind of at odds with it only because, you know, again, as a fan of the first game, it was like, oh, I wanted to play as Ellie. I wanted to see the continuance of her story. But upon the conclusion of this game, I realized that it is the continuance of Ellie's story. It is primarily Ellie's story and that The Last of Us has always been Ellie's story, not Joel's. Joel was basically along for the ride, even though he was like the, you know, the gruff, elderly, manly father figure guy from the first game who was like keeping her safe. Really, he taught her everything she needed to know and he has, as a character, basically served his purpose by the end of that first game. And the action that he takes by denying humanity the cure for the virus that is causing everybody to be zombie weirdos um, 
people have a right to be upset with him about that. And Abby, as you come to find, has a real reason to be upset with him about that because he killed her father, who happened to be the doctor that was going to perform the surgery on Ellie that was looking for the cure. So all of that being said, I, again, felt like the game was a little bit difficult to get through just because of how incredibly dark it was and how you have to just murder so many people and so many dogs and so many things are just so dark and horrible. The actions that you take, like, I'm just going to slit the throat of this pregnant woman, you know? Like, that's... Things in this game were just so incredibly dark that it's almost, like, unnecessarily dark. At the same time, the game is so well designed and programmed and, and developed and thought of uh, that it's hard to fault it in, in anything, really, because of just how remarkably well made it is. And they clearly, you know, the developers, Naughty Dog, you know, Neil Druckmann, whoever, they, they've put in a lot of effort putting this game together, and it shows in spades. The thing that I find interesting about it is that so many people were so upset over the content of, you know, this storyline being that Joel bites the big one, uh, that they, you know, downvoted the game on online sites like Metacritic or what have you. Uh, they boycotted it. They sent all these horrible messages to, you know, the voice actors, you know, people like the lady that portrays Abby, you know, it's like, come on guys, like it's a real human being in the real world. This is the real world the video game world is not real and this person has absolutely nothing to do with actually murdering anybody that you cared about it's a video game so good lord you're threatening somebody in real life it's ridiculous uh what i find interesting about all of that is the fact that this game underlines repeatedly how empty and needless and fruitless hatred and revenge are. This game expresses in no uncertain terms so heavily that it's almost like repetitive and like, okay, we get it, that hate doesn't lead to anything good. By the end of this game, Abby has lost everybody that she loves. By the end of this game, Ellie has lost everybody that she loves. By the end of this game, they're about to lose their own humanity through murdering each other. And it's weird to me that a game that is expressing how empty hatred is and leads to nothing is actually instigating hatred from a fan base over not being happy with the storyline of the game. Now, I can understand, you know, even as a fan of The Last of Us myself, that it could be disheartening after waiting so many years for a sequel to the game that it doesn't fulfill what it is that you were hoping for storyline-wise. But to exhibit the level of hatred where you're like literally threatening the life of another person over a video game is just beyond stupid. I myself was pretty upset about the film The Last Jedi, which I abhor, because as a lifelong Star Wars fan since I was, you know, one years old, uh, I felt that it kind of took a big dump on what it was that I loved in an effort to subvert expectations and, you know, change things up, uh, but needlessly in my mind. But I was never going to, like, you know, tweet to Ryan Johnson or threaten, you know, the man's life or, or do these crazy stupid things over something that's it's a movie, okay? So, and, and an artist has the ability to express themselves how they see fit. It, it, these properties are not something that we own or control, no matter how much love we may have for them or the characters or their plots or what have you. This is not up to us. If, it, if you want it to be up to you, you know, you can try and get a job as a writer on one of these things, you know, you can, you can try and make your own products, okay? Make your own art. And you can, you know, you can criticize the art of others, but until you actually walk in the shoes of an actual content creator, be careful acting like you know better. But I, for my part, regardless of how it was received and regardless of how difficult it was to get through, 
I still platinumed The Last of Us Part Two. I put in the effort and energy to sit there and, and basically play the game three times in order to be able to obtain all of those trophies, including the platinum for getting everything done. You know, I played through the game, the storyline, the first time. I played through portions of it chapter by chapter to get the little trinkets and things you have to collect, and then played it a third time in the New Game Plus mode, all the way up to the point where Abby was fishing around on a safe on a boat in order to get the Platinum Trophy and obtain everything, level the characters up and do everything that you needed to. And I still, you know, I felt a sense of achievement with, with doing that. Um, and I feel like it's a game that anybody who is interested in video games should play. And regardless of whether or not they agree with some of the content, it's an experience. I mean, it's almost more of an experience than a video game. I would suggest that having learned the lesson that hate leads to nowhere, I mean, at the end of this thing, Ellie doesn't even have fingers and can no longer even play the guitar that Joel had given her that you as a player are playing throughout the entire game. It's, it's very heavy-handed. Uh, I think that the next one, if they make a third, they may want to make a little less dark and a little more fun. It would be nice to see Ellie win somehow, you know, have something happen that puts her at peace. I don't mean necessarily kill her off too, but you know, if they could find a way to extract the cure for the virus from her somehow, and maybe her and Abby can work together to achieve that, or just something a little more positive that still, you know, has tension and is, has some darkness and, oh no, zombies, what, whatever. But um, maybe something a little lighter the next go around uh, so that people maybe aren't so put off by some of the content or some of the choices that are made. Last thing I want to talk about with The Last of Us Part Two, because I could go on forever as far as, you know, how well designed it is, you know, the graphics, the lighting, whatever, uh, was there was yet another controversy about one of the characters being a trans person. There were people that were upset on both sides over issues of inclusivity, over issues of, you know, utilizing her, her dead name. Uh, I feel like it's a, it's a double-bladed sword because you, or two-edged sword, whatever the phrase is, because you want that inclusion. You want to include people that should be included in mass market entertainment media. At the same time, you want to do justice to the characters and portray them accurately and even have people who are from, you know, those worlds portray those characters. And my understanding is in this case, the actor who portrayed the character was a trans person. So I feel like it was justified. And again, it's just odd to me that a game that is literally telling you, hey, you know what's a bad idea? Hate. Maybe you shouldn't hate. People are even hating on that. And this is a community of individuals that are receiving hate all the time now. So, like, it's disheartening. It's depressing. It's unfortunate. And it's something that, you know, bothers me about the overall gaming community, that there are these individuals that uh, have this much anger over things that they probably, you know they should be putting that energy towards something else entirely. And I can't fault them for, you know, spending a whole bunch of time playing video games because that's precisely what I've been doing for the last couple of months now. But I don't know. I feel like we could approach these things with a more positive outlook, a positive attitude, uh, you know, a sense of community and maybe even a sense of pride as a society that these kinds of things can be communicated, talked about, portrayed correctly, and celebrated, rather than people getting angry. Uh, because we all want inclusion, and we all want to be portrayed in a way that, you know, connotes respect and dignity. 
And I feel like so much effort and energy was put into the creation of this video game. And it shows so well that it should be appreciated almost independently as like a work of art as opposed to just as a video game. And I think that there is a very large like portion of the gaming community that does see it that way. And so regardless of how you feel about, you know, my little video here, uh, I'm hopeful that, you know, thinking about these issues, people will come to conclusions that they can live with about it and express them in a positive way, even in like the comments below, you know, hit the notification bell and subscribe if you want to hear more thoughts from me about video games. Um, but that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about as far as The Last of Us Part Two. It's phenomenal. It's amazing. I can't say that it's my favorite video game of all time because <laughs> it's so dark and so dreary, but it's probably one of the best made video games of all time. Just my opinion. It's an old dude that's doing video games because he can't do much else right now with the whole world having basically ended as we knew it a few short months ago. Anyway, so yeah, uh, that's my thoughts. I'm looking forward to receiving Ghost of Tsushima next. It's uh, on its way from Amazon. Uh, they'll deliver that in the next couple of days, and so maybe I'll post some thoughts on that because I do plan on playing a heck of a lot of that as well. Uh, I've also been doing a lot of Red Dead Redemption 2, which I know has been out for a long time, but I'm kind of new to it, and I'm about 50% through that. So we'll chat about that as well at some point. But anyway, that's all I got to say about that. I'm JTS. Thanks for tuning in and keep on gaming.